joining me today I really appreciate you guys um, just joining me week after week and when I put up um, videos I really thank you for your support of, of me and of my ministry and of what uh, the Lord has been speaking and imparting to me thank you so much I really appreciate it um, the other day no, last night, I was watching something on Netflix. It was a reality show of musicians. And anyone who knows me or has been watching me for a long time, either here or on YouTube, knows I love music. And knows that, um, yeah, I love music. So I was watching a reality show, um full of a bunch of musicians and they were all talking about how they thought they were not enough or not good enough for, for whatever uh, songs they were doing and, or whatever they were recording and how they struggled and as I was thinking in my in my bed last night I was thinking I, I said to the Lord, gosh, Lord, we all seem to go through this. Um, this thing of not being enough or not having enough or not feeling worthy. And he said, he said something strange to me. Um, he said, not enough can be a gift. I said, what do you what do you mean? He said, when people think they are not enough, that creates room for me because I am beyond enough. And he wants you to know today that not on, not only don't you have to feel like enough, not only aren't you enough, but he wants to he wants you to know that you don't have to be enough because he is beyond enough and he's just waiting for you to realize that. And we we all have areas of insecurity. My area may not be your area and your area may not be my area, but take no don't get it twisted we all have areas of insecurities uh, no matter how confident we feel there is an area that we that we struggle with that we feel insecure in, that we're not sure that we're not sure of and the Lord's saying in that area in fact in every area of your life um, 
he wants to show you how he can be beyond enough in that area. In every person's life, they are born um, with a need or a feeling that they are insufficient in some way because he wants to fill in that sufficiently gap, that insufficiency gap. The problem is when people don't know him and try to fill it with temporal things, those temporal things always fall apart because that gap, that feeling not enough, that feeling of you're not up to the task or you don't preach like this person or you don't raise your children like this person or you don't um, pastor like this preacher, or you don't do whatever, like whatever, that's the space that he wants to fill and show you ways that not only aren't you enough, ways that he wants to fill in the gap, ways that he wants to show you to um, minister to your kids, ways that he wants to show you how to um, lead your congregation in a new way. That's why you're not feeling like enough. Because if, you're, if you felt like enough, and if you felt all confident and stuff, you wouldn't need him. Your lack of, your lack of confidence and your lack of um, knowing what to do um, says to uh, yourself and God that, Lord, I need you. I'm talking about a healthy need. I'm not talking about a dangerous lack of confidence to the point where you're depressed and you're feeling like you're nothing. No, I'm not talking about that. That... Um, that means your how God how God your perception of yourself needs to become needs to become how God feels about you. And when your perception of yourself becomes how when let me say that again. When God's perception of you becomes how you perceive yourself that's when it will change. I'm. That's when your whole world will change. I'm talking about a, a, a feeling of just not feeling up to the task, or not feeling good enough for what the Lord has um, assigned for you to do, because He wants to fill in the spots that you don't feel like you're good enough, that you don't feel like you're ha like you have enough. And if if you can let him fill in those spots, he will take you in so many more places than you could have ever dreamed of. Um, and some people have the opposite problem. Some people think that that they don't need anyone, that they have got this, that they're too confident. But quite often with those people, that false confidence is a front um, because they're afraid to let people know that I don't have it all together. I don't have enough. So they try to overcompensate. They try and overdo things. They try and do everything for themselves uh, without asking for help because they're afraid to feel weak. But asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. And I think that if we can build... Um, build a healthy sense that no, we are not enough, 
and we can look at that as a gift because where I'm not enough, you can exceed the gaps. Like, um, where I don't have enough water, you can turn the little thimble I have into a well. And that well can overflow. There are untapped wells. I'm, I'm speaking to some people today who have untapped wells inside them, who have untapped purpose inside them, who don't feel like enough for their kids, who don't feel like enough for their jobs, who don't feel like enough for their churches. And the Lord would say, good, because I want to teach you um, the in that not enoughness, I want to teach you how I can fill in the gap and be beyond enough for your circumstances. And I think the, the, the beginning that you need is to acknowledge that you are not enough. And not only to acknowledge it, but to let God into it. And he will make you enough. And not only God, but your family and friends. Because God often, not always, but often works through those around us, those closest to us. And sometimes they can see that we need help. They can see that we're struggling. But we're so far into it that we don't know and we're afraid of their judgment but oftentimes they don't good friends don't want to judge you they want to love you and they want to help you and if you feel like you don't have good friends um god will stand in the gap god will be that person god will be that more than enough. Uh, on my Facebook page, on my Facebook page, uh, I, I, I put this quote. If you look at my Facebook page, you'll see it. Um, I said, I am nothing. God is everything. And through him, I become something. So he wants me to say that to you today. Um, you are nothing. I am everything. But through me, you become something. But not only just something, you become everything. And I don't mean nothing in a negative way. I mean nothing as in you're a jar of clay. Uh, he's created you to be molded. He's created you to be shaped in his hand. You are everything. You are nothing in your own strength, but you are everything in his strength. So put your nothing on his everything and you'll find freedom in that place. You'll find wholeness in that place. You'll find forgiveness in that place. You'll find love in that place. You'll find joy in that place. Put your nothing to his everything. And in that everything, you'll become beyond, beyond something. You'll become more than you could ever dream. The reason why you're struggling, the reason why you're going back to old normal, uh, to old patterns is because you feel like you have nothing left. You're tired. You're feeling just drained. But the Lord's saying, give me, give your not enoughness to me. And I will make it more than you could have ever dreamed. You're struggling alone, he said. But I haven't designed you to struggle alone. I haven't designed you to raise those kids alone. I haven't designed you to pastor alone. 
I haven't designed you to do whatever alone. I've designed you first to be with me and to be with people, the right people. Set the right people in your path. And if you don't know who the right people are, ask. Ask him to shine the light on the right people in your past. They are there, but you just, um, the light hasn't been shed on them. God often hides people in plain sight because often you just um, don't know who's watching you, who's looking at your life. Who is designed to help you until God illuminates it. So ask him this week to illuminate the people in your life that he's designed to help you. And sometimes it may not be um, a forever friendship. Maybe it will be for a season. Maybe in this season. He will bring people that you wouldn't imagine to help you because he knows you're tired of raising those kids. He knows that you're struggling. He sees you. He sent me on this Facebook channel to tell you, give him your nothing. He will make it ever. He will put his everything on it and it will come become not only something, but beyond something, beyond what you could ever have dreamed. But you're, you're holding on too tight, and you think of, um, and you're thinking, if you let it go, it will fall apart. But honey, it won't fall apart. Beloved, it won't fall apart. It will, can get put back together in the hands of God. It's falling apart in your hands because you're trying to carry it alone. But I'm begging you to not carry this alone. This is not the season to be alone. This is the season to gather around God and gather around people and to and to ask him to illuminate the friends in your life. Um, There was a supply I needed. I ordered this particular, this was a medical supply. Um, I ordered this particular supply on Amazon, but I looked at my finances and I said, I can't afford this. Like, I need it, but I, uh, I've got too, too much financially going on. I can't afford this, so I put it back. Do you know a day later, out of nowhere, God sent someone um, that is um, that I don't that I well I get along with this person, but that this person is kind of. Uh, not the easiest person to talk to, but but do you know that God used that particular person to get me the same item way cheaper, the exact same item that I was going to pay um, hundreds of a hundred plus dollars for. He sent me that same person to get a person to get it way cheaper. So the Lord knows what you need. So put his everything on your nothing and he will make it beyond something. So I'll say that again. Put your everything. Put his, no, put your nothing on his everything and he will make it beyond something. You're you're carrying it you're carrying it too long. 
It's too heavy for you to carry alone. You weren't meant to carry it alone. You had to in one season, but you don't anymore. God's saying, release it to me. Release that burden to me. Release those uh, homeschooling children to me. Release your church to me. Um, I'm going to say something to pastors now. I, I'm not a pastor yet, although that is in the vision uh, uh, plan. But some of you pastors are really reluctant to this new way of of doing church online. Um, and the Lord said, do it and he will be with you. Put your, put your nothing on his everything and he will make it beyond something. You don't know about Facebook or you don't know about Instagram or you don't know about all this online stuff. Get your grandchildren, get youth in your community. Get your five-year-old niece and nephew, get your five-year-old grandchildren, six-year-old grandson, to show you how to operate Facebook. If you need to get a webcam, order one. If you need to get certain equipment, order one. The gospel needs your voice. The Lord needs your voice. And you might be saying, oh, well, they have other bigger pastors with bigger churches. The Lord wants me to say, I, the Lord is saying this through me. I need your voice. I need your ministry. Let me use you in this time. Let me show you how I want to use you in this time this time. Those other churches can't do what you can do. Those other pastors that people know can't can't give what you can can't give what you can give. The Lord needs you. This is not the time to ju to jump ship and leave your congregation to say, oh they can go online to bigger, more successful to churches. No, they can't, Pastor. They need you. You can't quit. Rem and the Lord said, remember your calling. Remember the reason I called you. Remember your first love. Remember me. A lot of you pastors are tired. But he said, do not be weary. Do not be weary in well-doing, because in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Don't faint. Don't quit. That's what the devil wants you to do. Make him a liar. Don't put, stand flat-footed and remember the calling. Remember the calling. That's what the Lord keeps saying to me. Remember the calling. Remember the calling. Ask him to give you a refreshing of his Holy Spirit. Ask him to give you a refreshing of anointing. Ask him to give you dreams and strategies how to work in this pandemic. God, God needs you, Pastor. You can't quit now. You can't say, well, they'll go to this T.D. Jakes, or they'll go to this pastor, or they'll go to this church. We need you. We need you. Yes, they add a certain something, but you do too, Pastor. You, you add something too. We, we need you. And the thing with pastoring... Um, is there needs to be a pastor for every single type of person. Whether you wear holes in your jeans or whether you wear a three-piece suit, 
whether you pastor in the country, whether you pastor in the city, whether big town, small town, we need you. This word needs to go out. Um, people are dying, pastor, because you're not speaking. People need you. People need the word of God like never before. People need hope. People need love. And people need ministry the way you, you've done it. Don't quit. Don't give up. If you need help with social media, get help. Get, get help. Teach yourself about how to do it. Um, ask your grandchildren how to do it. Um, ask the youth in your com community how to do it. Ask the Lord to show you strategy on how to use social media. We need you, Pastor. We need you, Pastor. Especially older ministers. We need you. We need what the Bible calls the hoary head. We need your wisdom. We need your understanding. We need your strength. We need you. We need you. And I'm not saying that you don't need to shift or change some of those older ways, but we we need you. We need you. The world is pleading for you. And you might say, oh, I'm too old now. They don't need me. Yes, we do. We do. We certainly do need you. I don't know who that was for. But that was for someone. So, again, put your nothing on his everything, and it will become beyond something. Let him just break forth in you this week like never before. Let him just immerse you in his spirit. God, I pray that you will just immerse us in your spirit. Lord, let your anointing fall like never before. Break chains, O oh God. Break heavy bounds, O oh God. I declare by, by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are breaking chains, that you are breaking heavy bounds, that you are sending help, that you are showing people um, who and what you want them to be. That you are lifting uh, the downtrodden heads, oh God. That you are, that you are um, infusing dead hearts with life. That you are, are uh, infusing depressed spirits with joy. I declare that you're coming into every situation and shedding light into the darkness like only you can, I declare that God, right now, put back broken pieces. Put back broken pieces. Put back broken pieces. He will restore, deliver, right now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I declare that you were restoring what's been taken. I declare that you are restoring marriages in this moment. I declare that you are restoring child relationships in this moment. I declare that you are restoring jobs in this moment. I declare that you are restoring ideas. I declare that you are bringing dead things to life. Let dead things rise. Let what we thought was dead rise, oh God. Lord Jesus, I... I bless you, and I praise you, in the name of Jesus, amen, and amen. Alright guys, I'll see you later. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we 
standing here only because you made a way. And, okay, there's been somebody praying through the night for something. something. And the Lord wants me to tell you on the stream right now, He's making a way. He's heard your cry. He's heard your pleas through the night, oh God, for an answer to the situation. And the answer is on the way. The answer is on the way for your bills. The answer is on the way for your children. He's heard your cries. He knows your pain. He knows the deep insecurities of your heart. He knows where you feel you're failing, but you're not failing. He's just forming. You're not failing. God's just forming. God's just forming a new reality within your failure. The Lord uses failure to form new realities. And that's what he's doing right now in your situation. He knows you're crying. He knows the deepness of your heart. But you may not be crying even outwardly, but he knows that you've been crying. And he will answer the prayer. And he know, And he wants me to tell you that you that he is still God. That he is still with you. That he has never left you. You felt barren. But God's going to give you a bonus of strength this week. God is, in, God is infusing your barrenness with strength. God is infusing your barrenness with blessings. Blessings that don't look like blessings. Sometimes I was watching a preacher. I was in church last week and the message was beta blessings, uh, uh, blessings that don't look like blessings at first, but then at the end, they are blessings, and the Lord's doing that for someone on this stream this week, and, and we, we bless you for what you're doing, God. Thank you guys for your support in what, in what God has given me. I'll be praying for you this week. Thanks. Bye. Every time I turn around, blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings are blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings. Blessings, every time I turn around, blessings are blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings are blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings. Blessings every time I turn around. Blessings and blessings every time I turn around. Blessings, blessings. He is turning your barrenness into blessings. Your barrenness this week that you've been crying about for years is going to bear fruit. So every time you turn around in the next few months, you will see the blessings that you've been praying for. They may not come exactly how you've been praying for them, but you will see him answer prayer like you wouldn't believe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for turning your bar our barrenness into your blessings. We love you, Father.
We bless you, Father. We praise you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. We bless you and we love you. Every time I turn around, blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings are blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings are blessings. See you later. See you later, guys. Bye. You thought that I was worth saving. So you came and saved, and saved my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up, up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I can be free. So I can be home, now I will tell everyone I know, hallelujah, glory to the God who saved my life, you thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up in the winter. You thought I was to die for, so you sacrificed your life. Now I can be free, so I can be whole. Now I will tell everyone I know. Bye, guys.